Hey guys, welcome to another week in this series in 1 Timothy. Just going through the letter of 1 Timothy, just kind of learning more and more about what it means um, that Paul was instructing Timothy and what he wanted him to live his life like. And uh, so today, um, I was just thinking about this letter and I was thinking about how like obsolete um, paper products are becoming. Um, thinking about mail. How often do you get a letter in the mail? Very rarely anymore. Um, what else is going out? Newspaper. The newspaper, we're not getting as many newspaper subscriptions anymore. Uh, another thing is magazines. Magazines aren't having as many um, publications as they, as they were. Everything is de in decline. And uh, so when we get a letter or when we get something like that, it becomes pretty special. Um, I have, I have a drawer in my, in my office that has notes of people who have written me, um, encouraging me or nice things they've said about me. Um, and when I have one of those bummer days, I pull that thing out and I start reading through them. And, um, some of them have a little bit of instruction to it. Some of them are, are a little bit more, um, just funny or just heartfelt. Um, and, and in this letter... This is very heartfelt from Paul to his disciple Timothy. And he's saying, I love you so much that I don't want you to go through the same mistakes that I have gone through. Or here's some wisdom that God's given me. I want to share this with you. And uh, I was thinking about what if, what if I got a letter or an email that gave me some instructions on how to play guitar. And uh, many of you guys know I don't know how to play the guitar. And if I were to get instructions of how to play the guitar, um, I'd probably take it kind of seriously. Um, you know, I, I know the basics about guitar. I know this is um, the neck. This is, you know, a lot of people call this the head. And if I'm wrong on that, just go with it. Um, this is the hole where everything, the noise comes through. This is the pick guard so that way when you strum, you don't scratch up your guitar. Um, these are uh, each of these little metal things. Um, these lines are frets. Um, these are the strings. This is the, um, the top string and this is the low string. And in there, all the way down the line, I know there's an awkward string. If you don't know what that is, uh, it's called the G string. And so I know those things. But if someone had sent me a letter and said, hey, this is, this is how you play the guitar. I want you to practice. And, I, and I'd be like, sweet, okay. And then I'm like. I could really muster up and work at working on that. Now. Some people, this stuff just comes naturally. Um, they kind of just pick up a guitar and they're just like... And something really cool comes out. Me, not so much. I hold this guitar and I'm like, I feel foreign. And if I were to hold down and try to crinkle my fingers to do certain things, I would totally... Um, it, it would kill my fingers because they're not calloused to play the guitar. Um, and it's kind of weird that you have to get callous to play the guitar, but that's how it works. And so, if I were to get that instruction, I would take it seriously. Um, sometimes instructions come when we need to understand better um, how to live our lives, or someone sees something that we might need instructions to, to do, or um, to continue on. Um, so, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 through 20, 25. Says this, uh, The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For the scriptures say, Do not muzzle the ox while it is uh, treading out the grain. And the worker... Uh, deserves his wages. Do not uh, entertain any accusation against an elder unless it is brought by two or three witnesses. Those who sins or sin are to be rebuked publicly, so that the others may take warning. 
I charge you in the sight of God and Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, and the elect angels to keep these instructions without partiality and do not and do nothing out of favoritism. Do not be hasty in laying on hands and do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Stop drinking only water and use a little wine because of your stomach um, and your frequent illnesses. The sins of some men are obvious, reaching the place of judgment ahead of them, and the sins of others train behind them. In the same way, good deeds are obvious, and even those that are not cannot be hidden. You see, uh, Paul is writing these instructions to Timothy, and he's saying, you, um, I want you to learn about these things because ultimately some of these things are going to come up in your life and you're going to need to know about them. And I've kind of gone through them or I've seen these things in you. You know, he, he knows Timothy so well that he knows that Timothy struggles with um, a, an upset stomach. So he says, drink a little bit of wine. It'll help your stomach feel a little bit better. Um, I've heard some people say drink a Coca-Cola um, to help your stomach. Ease, ease your stomach. Um, I don't know who might say that. Um, but ultimately, he's seeing these things and he's saying, all right, I want you to live your life and to not have to go through the same struggles as me. So I'm going to give you instructions on how to live your life, right? And, and the sins that he's talking about um, he really wants people to take their sins seriously. Now, if if I were to think of if my sin and my sin to possibly go public, that would be intense. That would cause me to really reconsider um, sinning. And I know you know because a lot of sin is is kind of hidden, and a lot of sin is is just between you and God, and a lot of sin um, you don't see, and those sins. Are kind of sometimes can be can be really dangerous because they just you become a petri dish of sin that you keep sinning and you keep sinning and you keep sinning and it keeps multiplying and bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually it gets to a point that it goes public. Um, now some sin is very um, uh, is very upfront in front of your face and it shows that sin uh, the sin. Everyone sees it. Now, Paul is saying, sin is a sin. I want you to take care of it. I want you to deal with it. I want you to not see this as um, something that you uh, take lightly. Because he even says that as an elder, if, it, if you sin and two or three people come to you and you don't rebuke it or don't for, ask for forgiveness, they're going to take it publicly. Wow. That is intense. Now, um, I want all of you to take your sins seriously. I want all of you to keep short accounts, um, which means that when you sin and you realize you sin, immediately ask for forgiveness of the people that are involved. Immediately ask forgiveness from God. Immediately turn and go in the other direction. Because ultimately... We want to be like Jesus, and Jesus was perfect. Now, he's not asking us to be perfect. He's asking us to live our lives for him and in relationship with him. And as we live our lives in relationship with him, and when he reveals stuff to us, we got to take care of it. David was called a man after God's own heart because he took his sin seriously, and he took it to the cross. So, let me pray. We're going to go to small groups. Father, God, I pray you just be with us as we go to small groups. Lord, I pray that we would think um, of our sins seriously. We would think about what um, the, the status of these elders and how you um, prepared them, but also um, that our lives are to look like these elders. They're kind of our, our on-the-earth example of how to live our lives. So, Lord, I pray that you'd be with us during our small groups. Uh, may you be glorified. Uh, help us to be open and honest with our, our small group. Um, we love you. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.